Maxie. <coughs> I've been thinking. Should we do season three on the Dr. Joe show? <coughs> you sure? You sure it's a good idea? <coughs> We don't want the fucking embargo to end. We don't want it to end because we have our sources. We know where to get them. We have no problem getting them. But if it does end, we are going to have some major fucking issues. Because of taxes! Everybody seems to be forgetting about. If you think that all of a sudden Cuban cigars are completely legal and you're going to be ordering them without paying top dollar fucking taxes on them, you're fucking nuts! They are going to be taxed. And a, a whole brand new array of taxes created just for Cuban cigars. There are a lot of things I want to talk about right now and I'll try to fit them all in quickly. Number one, you know, this is actually a really good point at which to give an example for why some sites, cigars are $400 and others they're $800 for the same box of cigars. A lot of times, beginners have this question, and rightfully so, they're very skeptical because they see, well, $800 for a box of Vega Urbana Unicos on a site from the UK, but $450, $400, $350 from a site in Hong Kong or Switzerland, like finest Cuban cigars, for example. Well, that's because the site in the UK has already paid duties and taxes on those cigars. They own a shop, and the shop pays duties and taxes, and they need that money. And you're paying the, that country's duties and taxes. But when you buy from a site in Switzerland or Hong Kong, you know, sites that store their cigars in warehouses that aren't under the subject of their fucking tyrannical governments and aren't coded dripping with all sorts of fucking tax dollar signs, they're a lot less money. You know? There are people out there, they ask me, where should I order from? I give you sites. I say, finestcubancigars.com, and you come back to, oh, well, I saw this site in the UK, and they're so much more expensive, and I don't think those could be real. Oh, yeah, I've been doing this for fucking ten years. I'm just fucking shitting out my ear, just fucking, you know, telling people, ah, yeah, I don't care if you get fake cigars. Come on, are you fucking kidding me? Who, who are you going to listen to? A guy who has 2,000 people subscribe to him? with a channel on YouTube with tons of information and dozens and dozens of episodes, hundreds of videos that put in hours and hours and hours and days and, and years of work, who, who obviously has some fucking general knowledge on the subject, or some fucking douche that you have no idea who they are who posted a little snippet on fucking Cigar Inspector. Oh, but this guy just posted on Cigar Inspector, and it says, uh, I would rather buy, spend more money to be ensured that I'm getting the real fucking thing. If you can't tell it's the real thing, then what the fuck are you buying it for anyway? Trust me, they're real. So, unless you want to keep spending money to have the royal jewels of Parliament dusted every once in a while... Then go ahead, keep fucking buying from the UK. Keep spending $800 on that box of fucking Unicos. Vega Robe. Are you kidding me, man? Come on, man. Give me a break. But that's a perfect example of why certain sites are so much cheaper than other sites. But here's the thing. Once Cuban cigars are legal in America, 
It's not going to be like that. You order that $350 box of Partagas Lusitanius from Finest Cuban Cigars, by the time it gets to you, it's going to cost $600, $650. Just like it does in Canada. Just like it does in the UK. I sent a box of cigars to a friend in Canada. You know, $600 value, it got there. Guess what? Duties. It's marked gift. It's a personal thing. In this case, it actually was. Guess what? 300 fucking dollars in duties. All of a sudden, a $600 box costs $900. So now you know. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Mark my fucking words, you will pay taxes. And this will also help the whole counterfeiting industry. Counterfeiters will say, oh, well, we already got the cigars over here. We snuck them in, so there's no taxes on them. That's why they're so cheap, you know. And because they're legal, people won't think twice. Bad fucking news in both fucking directions, you know? And uh, that's how it's going to be. Taxes, taxes, taxes. And more taxes. And then some more taxes. So, so here's the thing. He here's where we are now. All of a sudden, it's now legal to bring $100 of cigars back from Cuba. Okay. Well, you know what? Beside the tax issue, besides, I'll get back to that. But do you know what that means? That means it can no longer be le illegal to own Cuban cigars or smoke Cuban cigars. Unless they expect you to, what, just look at them? You know, and then if, you, if it's no longer legal to own them or smoke them, then it shouldn't be illegal to privately sell them. Just saying. Just saying. That's the problem. You tamper with one rule, all the other ones fall apart. It's illegal to smoke Cuban cigars in the United States. Well, it can't be because now you're letting us bring them back for $100 worth. That's what they're for, smoking. It's illegal to own them. But you're letting me buy them for 100 bucks and bring them back. I have to be owning them. <laughs> Makes no fucking sense. But here's another thing that doesn't make sense. Why only a hundred dollars? Okay, I'll get back to that. Let's take a look at this. Years ago, having your cigars taken, confiscated, was a real issue. It happened quite often. Some years were terrible. And you can kind of see by the forums, you know, threads, my cigars, help! My cigars were fucking confiscated. What do I do? What do you what do what do you do indeed? You don't do shit. They're gone. Hopefully you ordered from some respectable vendor with a fucking delivery guarantee who's gonna replace them. You know? But that's not the issue anymore. Personally, I haven't had an issue in two years. Three years. Second of all, if you go on the forums, threads like my cigars were confiscated are non existent. The only thing you'll see is people, my cigars didn't get here yet, what's going on? Dude, give it a fucking chance. I got people emailing me, it's been four days and my cigars aren't here. What are you talking about? Fuck, Amazon drones aren't flying yet. This is not fucking McDonald's, you know? Give it, have some fucking patience. But here's the thing. How come? How come all the cigars are getting through? Well, there's two possibilities. One, one is customs has been told by the federal government, don't stop cigars anymore. It hasn't been publicly announced, but I believe that to be the case. Because the second option is just fucking plain scary, and that is they're missing all these packages. That they're not fucking searching them, or that they just, they're just fucking flying through. I mean, I could be ordering fucking God knows what. Anybody could. You know? So, those are your two options. I pick number one. But if that's the case, why wouldn't they publicly announce it? And why can you only bring back $100 worth of cigars from Cuba right now? Because they haven't fully put into effect how they're going to tax these cigars. You may also be saying to yourself, well, wait a second. We get Nicaraguan cigars over here, Dominican cigars. We don't pay import taxes on the... You're not ordering Dominican and Nicaraguan cigars from overseas. You're not, because they're already here. You know? 
It works very, di again, very, very different from the Cuban cigar industry. You have companies in the Dominican, say the Dominican Republic. They put together a master case of cigars, ship it over to a cigar distributor in the United States, who then ships it out to retail shops where it is sold online or on the shelves. That's all taken care of for us. It would be akin to living in the UK and buying cigars, Cuban cigars from La Casa del Habano. You didn't have to order them from overseas. They're already here. Taxes are already on them. Taxes are already on them. Unless you're in a duty-free zone. But the Cuban cigar thing is completely different than that. Because they're not coming over here in master cases. They're going to distributors who distribute them to places like our vendors who we then have to order from and then they come over here from overseas subject to duties and taxes and that's it so while they're busy testing the waters and slowly releasing the fucking clamps on the hatch that is the embargo and letting the fucking waters flow through by saying hundred dollars it's okay don't stop the packages anymore Fuck it, but don't make the announcement. And don't let him bring back too much. Because when we lift this fucking thing, everybody's going to be ordering. And by that time, we'll be damn fucking ready to make sure we tax every goddamn box we can. If you can't read my little cartoon over here, and I'll put the picture up in a second, I designed this myself. It's made out of clip art and a whole bunch of other things I found online. I am not taking responsibility for the actual drawings. I did not draw them. I did use Photoshop to take seven different elements and put everything all together, not including the text. And what you have here is <laughs> for Del Castro and Obama, the embargo over. How about a smoke? Del Castro said, wonderful. I will send you a box of cigars right away. And then you got this guy up here. I fucking know you weren't trying to sneak these past me. <laughs> Because that's how it's going to be, you know, at least in my eyes, at least in my eyes. And so, my friends, this episode comes to a screeching halt because that is all there is to really talk about when it comes to the embargo. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there disagreeing with many things I've said. I'm sure there are a lot of people agreeing with things I've said. But do me a favor, before you disagree disagree properly. Disagree with some research behind why you're disagreeing. Okay? Because I think if you don't follow your emotions and just start blurting out what you think is going to happen without having researched any of the things behind what's going on, then you're going to be wrong. You know? You can't just... I have people, oh yeah, it's going to be... Of course they're going to be in cigar shops. Why wouldn't they be? You, it's funny, and people will argue with me about that because their mind is set on that, because that's what they want. But they know absolutely nothing about how distribution works, about where the cigars, about the, the legal battles between the, the companies, between the country. They don't know any of that. They just believe the cigars will be there. That's not how life works, my friends. That is not how it fucking works. Okay? So, that's that, you know. And you might have... Here's the thing, too. It's so funny how it's like, the, it's like they fucked themselves. You see what happened? Cuban cigars are illegal. Nobody can have them. We found a way to get them. We're ordering them, ordering them, ordering them. There's so many coming in, they can't even possibly check half of them. Can't even check a quarter of them. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, just fuck it, whatever. They can't tax them because they're still technically illegal. You understand? <laughs> they can't tax them because they're illegal. We have it better here. Them being illegal is better than if we were in Canada or the UK or just about anywhere. The only thing we have to deal with is, are we getting the real thing? And by now, I hope, if you've been watching my show at all, you know that if you do what I say, you'll be getting the real thing. You know? So, and here's another thing. You might think, Oh, well, because they're legal, and because my local cigar shop has a tobacco license, he can order Cuban cigars from a vendor and then sell them to me. No, he fucking can't. 
not going to happen because that's tax evasion. And that they will put you in federal prison for. You see, when they get somebody for selling Cuban cigars, and I know a guy that this happened to a while back when I was working at the tobacco shop. This is a true story. I think I may have mentioned it before. They don't give a fuck about people fucking buying smoke and they send you a letter, go home, whatever, you know, bad boy. But if you're selling them, they don't put you in federal prison because you were selling Cuban cigars. They put you in federal prison based on tax evasion. Selling tobacco without a license, not providing tax information, giving taxes for your profits to the federal government. That's what they nail you on. He did a year because he was selling Cuban cigars under the table at his place of business. So, if you think your tobacconist is going to do that, well, they might. But here's another thing. Even if they're stupid enough to do something like that and risk their entire business for a couple of hundred bucks, a couple of extra dollars a month, whatever, how well does your tobacconist actually know Cuban cigars? Where is he going to be getting them from? Does he know what the fuck he's doing? You know? Look, there are a whole bunch of different levels to us out there, you know? And, you know, just because somebody's been working at a shop for 20 years and knows everything about the cigars over here, doesn't mean they know squat about Habanos, you know? It's a totally different fucking picture. They either do or they don't. They either, they either have been involved or not been involved. And if they haven't, then they don't know, you know? So you got to just be careful, and that goes back to the whole excess of counterfeiting and stuff. This has been fun. This has been fun. I'm all smoked out. It's been a long day. Did a lot of editing, a lot of recording, and uh, the show is going well. I hope. <laughs> That's really up to you out there. <clears throat> I'm going to end this by saying good night and rethink exactly why you want the embargo to be lifted, you know. And I'm not talking about any other political aspects of it, you know. But then again, what the fuck do I know? I'm just an average guy with an above average passion for tobacco. <laughs> I mean, it's never like I've been right about any of this shit before. <laughs> so, it, from a cigar smoker's point of view, not good. You know, not good. Not good, because we already know where to get our cigars, you know? I mean, who cares if they're not available in shops? Who cares? In the end, the only really bad thing that, that comes of it is those taxes, are those taxes. That's the bad On a final thing. note, I just want to remind everyone out there that everyone, from the slimiest peon sitting at the lowest circles of the counterfeit circuit to the most prominent big shot, of the upper echelons of Habanos SA is after one thing your money everyone and I do mean everyone is after your money um, and that's something to always remember all that being said this has been a great episode I mean <laughs> I mean I hope it has I mean uh, that really is up to all of you out there but uh what I'm trying to say is I had a lot of fun, you know, blew some steam off, got my smoke on, got some information out there, some pertinent information that I really wanted to add to the whole body and meat of the show. So I'm good. I'm happy. And I hope you are too. Good night. Have a wonderful fucking work week. <laughs> and to get through it, just keep on smoking. I'm Joe, and this is the Say goodnight, Max. <laughs>